So I'm supposed to come up here and talk about winning, man. Y'all don't have enough time for that shit. <laughs> 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 I don't even know where to start. I met Wynton on, uh, at a music summer camp. And uh, <laughs> it was funny, because when Wynton was up here talking about shit talking, I was like, man, you weren't lying about that. Because <laughs> I remember the first time I met Wynton, you know, he started challenging me to some shit. He doesn't even remember this. I know he doesn't remember this. But he started challenging me in the parking lot. You know, and he put up his hands like he was going to fight. But, you know, obviously I'm a little bigger than him. So I'm, I'm like, really, dude? <clears throat> and the wild part about it was he was only doing that shit because Branford was standing behind his ass. <laughs> and then Branford had that look like, man, I got to go through this shit again. <laughs> and by the way, I was in fifth grade. He was in sixth. <laughs> so that lets you know how long this shit been going on. You know what I mean? And it was funny because, you know, when I met him back then, you know, it was interesting. He was fascinated with the C major scale. I know he doesn't remember all of this stuff, but I do because it had a huge effect on my life. But he would play this C major scale. All, you know, that's all he could play. Because I didn't tell you the most important part about that summer music camp. We were the two saddest trumpet players in the goddamn camp. <laughs> it's true. He'll tell you it's true. It was a it, right. It was true, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a it was a it was a concert band, right? And me and him held the last two seats in the trumpet section. <laughs> and most of our music had rests. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they didn't even have notes on this shit. It was, I'm like, just let them sit there. Shit. <laughs> y'all don't got to do nothing. Just sit there and look cute, man. And we let y'all in here. Just be glad. God damn it. And we sit down and talk. I said, but what'd you do today? Oh, man, I play some ball. In the middle of rehearsal, you know. But here's the thing about that, though. So, you know, that was when we were kids. Now, here's a, the, the coolest thing about all of that to me is that from, from then until now, he's still always going to be older than me. <laughs> right? Can't change that shit. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing about it. So, you know, that was when we were in elementary school. Then a few years later, I heard him play, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what the hell are you eating? You know, playing all these notes on the horn, and I was like, God damn. And he was like, Bro, you got to go to Noka. And I was like, Noka? What kind of cereal is that? <laughs> I never heard of that. And then he told me what the acronym meant. And it started us on a path. Because one of the things that was like interesting about us is that we weren't always the favorite in our neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? You know, we grew up in these, I grew up in Wendell Pierce, we grew up in Punta Train Park, New Orleans, Louisiana, you know what I mean? And uh, <clears throat> man, going to the bus stop every day with my horn in my hand was a journey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you had to deal with the brothers that was not going to the bus stop. <laughs> you know, and we didn't notice as kids, but they could see that you had ambition and they were jealous of all of that. You know what I mean? So they would always test us all the time, we talk about it. But the thing that was beautiful was, once I got on that bus, once I got to wherever it is I was going, I was running into kids that was just like me. And Wynton was one of them, you know? <laughs> now, Wynton was always the most serious of all of us. You know, when we were in that music camp that I was telling you about, <laughs> you know, me and Branford would go play pinball <laughs> at, the, at the student center, because it, it was on Loyola's campus. And while we was in there playing pinball, <laughs> I can't even tell you what Wynn would say, but you know, he'd walk by and he'd just give us that look like, dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> you remember that, right? <laughs> 
And he'd be off in the practice room and doing all of his shit, and we'd be looking at him like, dumb motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I mean, when he started to play, we felt like the dumb ones, you know what I mean? <laughs> and throughout our years of growing up, he's always been an inspiration, man, always, you know? From the time that we, and I, and I think about that, and I think about how blessed we were to find each other. Because yeah. a lot of our kids don't get a chance to do that. And it's one of the reasons why I'm a big proponent for all of these programs that help with kids learning how to play music. It's important. <laughs> it's important. You know, because if it weren't for those programs, I wouldn't have known that brother existed until he was a success. But since I met him when I was a kid, that became my family. You know, I remember one time, man, his mom cooked some spaghetti. He didn't want no spaghetti. You remember that story? You don't want me to tell that story, huh? Yeah. Suffice it to say, I ducked. That's all I'm going to tell you. All right. Yeah, I was sitting there going, boy, that's a brave brother there. <laughs> but look, man, you know, I have to get back to the notion of striving for greatness. We grew up in a community that wasn't necessarily trying to show us that. But the, the family within the community would. And I have to explain it to you like this. You know, growing up in New Orleans, I was a believer of the American dream. I believed that if you worked hard and if you did things the right way, you would be rewarded for your efforts. So, so you, can you imagine my surprise that when I met Winton, I started learning about Clifford Brown, who nobody knew. I started learning about Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk, who nobody knew. Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and all of these guys, and I'm sitting there saying to myself, something's fundamentally wrong. And the most important thing about all of that was I found comfort and inspiration in being around this guy from the time that we were the size, right? We moved to New York. We start to have our careers. He's playing with our Blakey, you know, and this is how much of a family we were, you know. He's playing with our Blakey, and look, I'm, I'm sitting there going, damn, we're playing with our Blakey, that's killing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he goes, yo, bro, I want you to audition for the band. I said, what? <laughs> Who? Do what? Not me, bro. Yeah, you. So he inspired me to, to uh, audition for our Blakey. The reason why I'm laughing is because we were we was sitting back there while Wendell was talking about staying at Wendell's apartment, and I remember <laughs> I had this audition, man, for... I forgot one of them programs, uh, Presidential Scholars in Arts or something like that. And I had to come up to New York for the thing and I had to stay with Wynton. And I was excited, I'm going to New York. And Wynton had this little bitty studio apartment. And I was looking at that shit going, this is what I'm working for? <laughs> I don't know about this shit. That, that insurance job is looking awful good right about now. <laughs> You know, <laughs> get a little job, get my benefits, I'd be good. <laughs> um, but, like Wendell said, it was always about excellence. It was always about trying to, well, not, I shouldn't say that. It was always about not allowing outside forces to deter us from our goals. You know? And, and it's something else Winton doesn't know. He doesn't, he doesn't know this either, so I have to tell you guys tonight. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I always tell my students is that when Winton became extremely successful early in his career, a lot of people looked at, at the success and wanted that, right? They didn't understand what it took to have that. Yeah. And I remember when he was at uh, Juilliard, and I was uh, applying to schools to go to college, and I had, one of them was USC, and uh, I was gonna study with Thomas Stevens. He was studying with uh, Jeroa Schwartz, Bacchiano, right, Bacchiano. And I was gonna study with Thomas Stevens in, um, in uh, LA, 
and I remember I called him and we had a conversation on the phone and we didn't think about stardom. That wasn't in the plan. It was about being the best musician that you could ever be. That was the plan. So, so I remember him saying, yeah, bro, man, you could have the clubs out in LA and I'd be in New York, bro. I had the clubs in New York. We have it sold up. <laughs> and I'm only telling you that to tell you that that's where our mind was. So all of this is gravy. All of it. But here's the thing about it. Most people would get this and stop and say that I've made it. No. It's a journey. It's a lifelong journey. You know, and the thing that we have to understand is that we were taught by some brilliant minds. Yes. Ellis Marcellus. Yes. You know. Yes. And Roger Dickinson. Yes. Two best friends. Right? Those guys taught us, and I just said, I'm no, I know I'm going off, of, but I just want you to know this. You have to understand the background. I'm studying with these guys, and they're teaching me things that I don't even realize about spirituality, yes. about life, yes. right? And the older I became, I never forget, I come back home, and I've been reading Paramahansa Yogananda, and I come back and I show Roger, and he talks about it. Oh, yeah, me and Ellis have been reading that all our lives. And then Winton told me tonight when he left New York, his daddy gave him that book. They didn't proselytize to us, right? Because they respected our family's decisions about our spiritual beliefs. But they taught us and pointed us in a direction. And one of the things that they gave us that I'm always grateful for is the tools to constantly learn. Yes. Which is the most important thing you could give a kid. It's not just telling them what to study. Right? So I'm happy to be here to, to honor this brother because he is my brother yes. for my life for a long time. Hey, look, I ain't got no shame in my game. I just turned 60. You know what I'm saying? And for damn near 50 years, he's been my inspiration. Right? And I look for another forward to another 50 years of this because <laughs> because the older we get you know the smarter we get because we were some young and dumb motherfuckers when we was young oh my god y'all have no idea the dumb shit we used to do when they say God takes care of fools and babies he got tired of looking after our ass you know what I mean but look, uh, many of you don't know this name, but we used to call him Skane when he was a kid. And uh, so, look, to Skane, you know I love you. Always have, always will. I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of this organization yes. to take the time to honor you tonight. And I just feel blessed and, look, happy to be here, to just to be a part of it in some kind of way, you know. Yeah.